Welcome everybody. Today, an art journal tutorial for you using my prompt and process cards. I'm Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Here are the products that I use. One stamp, two stencils, three stencil butters, four colors, and five prompt and process cards. So I had so many ideas coming into the studio today and I couldn't get started. So this is the perfect time to bring out my art journal prompt and process cards. They're available at ninniesnapkins.com. The link is in the description box. So today I'm going to deal myself 10. Now I like choices. So while I'm dealing myself 10, I'm only going to expect myself to use five of them. So I can pick whatever five I want and I can put them in whatever order makes sense to me. So I had stamp with thick gesso, stamp or stencil to create pattern, stamp onto book paper, stamp or sent stamp the sentiment on rice paper, collage gel prints or collage papers, use DIY mark making tools, use a brayer to put down color, add contrast with black and white, use modeling paste through a stencil, and use your own photos or public domain pictures. So now that I have all 10, I'm gonna take some time, think it over, figure out which one. And some of them I'm not deciding until I get into the creative process. So to put the color on the background, I am going to brayer the color down. It's a quick, easy way, and I'm using yellow green, turquoise, and dioxazine purple. I'm doing this on my 11 by 12 Canson mixed media page that I've taken off the coils and then when I'm all done, I can put it back on. So here's the yellow green. I'm using the Ranger, I think it's two and a half inch brayer, which I prefer using straight on the page. I use my four inch one when I'm on the gel plate, but for putting it on the page, I do this. Now, put brayering it on, it dries really, really quickly. But I'm not too worried about making mud because I know all the colors that I'm working with are going to do well. And it's pretty much dry anyways. So I put the yellow green, now I'm putting the turquoise. And I'm taking some, I believe I'd use some white gesso here just to knock back knock it back just a little bit, kind of, it mutes it. This is in place of the base color. And I know that I'm going to do some stenciling of some sort on top of this, and I want that to maybe be a little bit more forward. So you can see how I just knock it back, but you still see those colors. And I'm strategically putting some of the white gesso where there was a kind of a glob that I may not have particularly liked. My entire table is a glass. So I just work right on the glass. I put the paints on for the brayer. I could use it as a palette. It cleans so easily. So here I'm just adding that little bit of purple. I don't want much of it. Definitely less than the turquoise and the, the yellow green. Now I'm adding a little bit more turquoise. I want I want that to be the strongest color. But I do like that yellow green in the background. With and that little bit of purple. So this is a picture that I took when I was visiting Beacon Hill Park in Victoria, BC. I cut out the head and I'm going to use it. I liked how the turquoise went. Now one of my other card said use modeling paste so i am going to actually use stencil butters it's similar to modeling paste same consistency and i picked four colors that match the colors that are in the background now i don't want any texture under where i put the head of the peacock 
So I'm just tracing that with my um, General's white charcoal. I use three of the colors. I don't use the purple. I use the blue, the um, chartreuse, I believe it's called, and the turquoise. I'll list these in the description box below. They are also available at Ninny's Napkins. Now I'm just rubbing this motif, this center part of this Mandela stencil. This is stained glass stencil, I believe, also from the Crafters Workshop. And I'm mixing the blue, the teal, and then I'm adding a little bit of the chartreuse. It's not, it doesn't give you a perfect stencil, but I'm loving the look. It's a little texturized and it is all so shimmery. You want, when you're stenciling, have some that are going off the page. I picked this motif, this Mandela stencil, because this, in my mind, it resembled a peacock tail. And since I've chosen that as my focal image, I wanted everything to work together. These stencil butters just work so well when you push them through the stencil like this and they just blend and you can make your own designer colors by mixing the colors. And look at that shimmer. It is like, oh, take time, let that dry. Now I'm adding contrast with black and white was my card. So I grabbed this indigo blue poppycock stamp and I stamped it out multiple times and I'm using this to make the tail of the peacock. So while I have what looks like peacock tail in the background with that Mandela stencil, I'm actually making this tail with the stamped poppy. There's lots of ways that you can add a peacock tail to the head. You can use collage papers, you can use stencils, you can use other stamps, you can use napkins. And I challenge you to find a way to use the peacock head and develop the tail of the peacock in a different way. This, I am using that same stained glass stencil, just using a different part of it. And I'm using, um, it's an Amsterdam paint and it's greenish blue. And it's a little more translucent than the turquoise and a little bit darker, which is why I chose it. I wanted it to stand out a little bit. So even though this is a Mandela stencil, I'm not using it as the full-on Mandela. This stencil is called something wallpaper. It'll be in the description box. And I'm adding a little bit of purple to the background. This is adding that contrast, adding that darker color that just seemed to be missing. And one of my cards said to stencil or stamp pattern. So that's what I'm doing here. This addition of this dark purple, this dioxazine purple, just really made this background. I'm just wiping with the baby wipe, getting rid of the charcoal, the white charcoal that I traced. And now I'm just going to set up my focal image, trying to arrange these flowers in a way that, in my mind, resembles the peacock tail. 
and I don't want to cover up too many of those stencil buttered motifs so I'm playing with it a little bit more because I want some of the I want a lot of that background to show because I'm really loving it if there was something that I didn't like that would be a perfect place to cover it up that's also the reason that I chose to work on the 9 by 12 page as opposed to the 7 by 10. The 7 by 10, this would have fit, but you wouldn't see very much of the background. I'm finding I'm missing a motif back here, so I'm just coming back in with the stencil and my stencil butters. And just adding that back in a bare spot. And once you do composition, you can always reevaluate what you have. Now, before I glue anything down, I want to figure out the sentiment that I want. So I go to my quote binder and I'll put a link to how I set this up. These are all my sentiment packs and I flip through. And this is sentiment pack number three, live life in full bloom and believe in magic. So then I go into my other binder where I have some of these that are already printed out. I look there first and now I'm just what I call bubble cutting. I'm just leaving a very fine bit of white around it. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to block off too much of the background. I really thought about uh, stamping or printing this off onto tissue paper so I could see that background. This is being a bit lazy and just I thought, oh, this will do it as well. There's a lot of white on there with the poppy stamp image. So I was deciding between the two sentiments and I take a picture of each. In the end, both would work perfectly well. I chose this one because I, I thought the flowers on the tail tied in better. So now that I know what sentiment I have, I can glue everything down. And I'm looking at all the things that I'm gluing down and trying to glue what's underneath first. And I'm using my fluid matte medium to do that. That seals the copy paper that I've stamped on and printed on and allows me when I do some shading in some upcoming steps here it allows me to do that because I've turned it into a non-porous surface so this takes a little bit of doing making sure that everything's done I did take a picture of it so if I forgot how it all went together how I liked it I can go back to the picture Now I want to shade around the outside and I grab my General's charcoal pencil. This is the soft one. I believe it's 4B. It was faster. And then when I started shading around here, it's a little tough to use the charcoal pencil and get right next to the paper. And I went and I grabbed my angle brush and I'm using the shading acrylic technique to shade the rest of it. I just find it's faster for me and it is permanent. So I'm going to shade the inside of that poppy around the peacock, around the page. It's giving the effect that I like a little bit better. The charcoal didn't go on top of the stencil butters, whereas the acrylic paint did. And now I'm just shading around the poppies. turning the page as I go. I just want to define where some of these poppies were and that's how shading. I grab the yellow green and I think, oh, I'm gonna paint the center of these flowers. I'm gonna leave the rest white. And I really liked that, but then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use the chartreuse 
stencil butter. You can apply stencil butters with a paintbrush as well. That's going to bring the shimmer to the center of this and it's just that little bit brighter and it ties in with the stencil butter that I've used in the background as well. I'm taking the matte medium brush out of the cellophane that I put it in or the the uh, saran wrap and just gluing down my sentiment now I'm peeling back the painters tape that I put so I keep a straight edge and keep everything out of the coils and I find that if you heat it you're less likely to pull up paper. So I'm absolutely loving this page and I hope you do too. So remember I dealt myself 10 prompt and process cards and I used five of them. I brayered the beginning colors. I used the stencil butters instead of modeling paste, same thing, through a stencil and I just pushed it through with my finger. I added some more stenciling. I used my own photo of the peacock and I cut out the head. I added contrast with black and white by using a stamped image love 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 all the shimmer thanks so much for joining me give me a thumbs up leave me a comment go and make your peacock tail your way come and share it in my facebook group art journaling and mixed media creations bye for now